45 minutes past the hour. Welcome back to the most politics in the morning. How do you inspire the base that helped propel you into office? It's proving to be a bit of a challenge for the Obama administration with just three weeks to go now until the midterm elections. The president's been hitting the campaign trail. He's trying to fire up the crowds and rekindle the excitement from two years ago. Our victory in that campaign, that wasn't the end of the road. That was just the beginning of the road. That was just the start of the journey. By itself, it does not deliver the change that we need. On November 2nd, I need you as fired up as you were in 2008. Well, the president has good reason to be in all-out campaign mode. The latest CNN polls show Republicans with a 20-point lead when it comes to voter enthusiasm. So what happened to all of those fired-up Democrats from two years ago? Our next guests say that the president flat-out failed to deliver what he promised, and they're both Democrats. Syndicated columnist David Sirota joins us from Denver, and in Washington, Jane Hampshire, founder of FireDogLate.com, a progressive blog. Thanks to both of you for being with us. Thank you. Uh, Jane, let me start with you. Uh, conventional uh, wisdom, of course, is that the president's party always tends to lose. They, they face an enthusiasm gap in the midterm elections. But personally speaking, what has the president done or not done that's let you down? Well, I think that one of the things that people are seeing is not that he failed to do things, but that he claimed to support things and then his actions didn't match up with his words. For instance, he's promised on many occasions to end uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And Congress has, of course, not been cooperative on that front. But as commander in chief, he could suspend the discharges under Don't Ask, Don't Tell right now. And we've got Joe, we've had Joe Biden who has been saying, oh, well, we can't suspend them because we traded that away for the votes in the Senate. But it didn't pass the Senate. And so people are going, wait a minute. You said you had the votes and then you don't and you could do this, but you're not. So, you know, what's really going on here? And I think that that's caused a lack of trust. Uh, another thing, David, that's interesting, though, is that the president has taken a lot of political heat. He's seen his poll numbers drop for um, supporting things that progressives and liberals are in favor of things like the health care reform and the bailout. So isn't he between a rock and a hard place when it comes to this? Because some of the things that you want him to go a step further with, he's losing support for doing. Well, I don't think that, that progressives and liberals are, are for the, were for the bailout, were for the bank bailout, and I don't think they were for the health care bill it was, as it was constructed. Uh, well, I think I mean, the, me, the main let me tenets just clarify of... clarify about the, about the bailout is that, I mean, there were a lot of, uh, of, of economists like Paul Krugman and others who said he didn't do enough. It should have been bigger. The stimulus should have been bigger. Um, uh, per, you know, I understand what you're saying, that you weren't happy that the bailout had to happen, but felt that more government intervention was better. Well, yeah, I just want to make a distinction. I mean, there was the bank bailouts and then there was the stimulus. Those are two separate things. I think, look, I think progressives have said about the stimulus that it didn't go far enough, that it wasn't big enough to make the right economic impact. I think people think that the health care bill didn't include key provisions that would have actually made the health care bill actually work in a lot better fashion as opposed to being a pretty big giveaway to the insurance industry. So my point here is only that the president has put forward big ideas but I think it goes back to whether he's going to and whether he did legislate them in the precise way, in the precisely progressive way that he said he would. And I don't think that he has. There was no public option. The Wall Street bill got watered down. Uh, the bank bailouts uh, were, frankly, uh, big giveaways to the banks. Uh, and so I think that, again, that they were not structured in a way where he looked like he tried, where he effectively tried uh, to legislate them in a progressive way. Jane, in some cases, though, isn't it ideas versus reality? He would have wanted a public option, but um, in, in some cases, it might not have even gotten through the Congress uh, because of Democrats who weren't necessarily supporting a public option. Well, I believe that that's the, the line that they tried to uh, peddle. But this last week, we saw Tom Daschle give an interview for his new book that says that the White House traded away the public option very early in the process in 2009, uh, long before it ever hit Congress. And so, again, people are going, wait a minute, the president was saying as late as September that he supported a public option, but he'd actually already traded it away. Uh, you know, so it didn't really have anything to do with how anybody in Congress felt. And so that's the problem that we're getting to. If you look at the Hispanic vote, it's actually shifted weirdly, almost 20 points towards the Republicans since July.
And that's not because they think that the Republicans, the party that passed the immigration bill in Arizona, uh, you know, represent our, our great champions of, uh, you know, issue, Hispanic issues. It's because they believe that the president was not honest with them. And, you know, despite the fact that he says, yes, I'm for, pro, you know, immigration reform, deportations are actually up significantly uh, under Obama than they were with George Bush. So there's a, a lack of confidence going on. There's a gap between action and rhetoric. And people are nervous. Uh, the, the stimulus bill, you know, people argue about whether it was big enough, big enough or small enough, but the fact is that we have a very bad jobless crisis right now. We've got a foreclosure crisis, and the president hasn't articulated a clear message that people feel they can have confidence in in order to be able to, you know, go to the polls and go, yeah, this is what right. I want for my life. And so, David, where does it leave uh, people like you who obviously would much rather still see the Obama administration um, in power and the Democrats in control of Congress than having anything be ceded to the GOP. Um, when you hear things like buck up, stop whining, some of the things on the campaign trail that uh, Joe Biden um, has said, does that inspire you to go vote or does that annoy you? <laughs> Well, I think it's perplexing. I mean, I think I think if you yell at people uh, and you tell them in the middle of a, the worst recession in the, in the country's contemporary history uh, to to stop whining, I think that really shows just how out of touch this White House is. I mean, I, I think there may be a triangulation strategy here. Frankly, I think the White House may be politically calculating that it can bash its own base, and that's somehow a way to get Republican or independent voters. I don't think it will work. I think it's a mistake. I think the best way for the the uh, Obama administration to go about motivating people is to say, listen, we didn't do enough, uh, we're going to try harder, uh, and that's why you should elect Democrats. Unfortunately, that's not the message right now. Mark Halperin said that the White House is, quote, in over its head, isolated, insular, arrogant, and clueless, uh, clueless about how to bring everyone together. Um, and he said that this was an article that he wrote for Time magazine where he said that this isn't just the opinion of Republicans but Democrats as well. I mean, Jane, has it, in your opinion, gotten that bad with the way that um, people who supported the president so uh, unabashedly in 2008 feel this way now? Well, you know, as you said, there always is an enthusiasm gap uh, in a midterm election. But I think one of the things that Mark Halpern is referring to is the fact that there's tremendous dissent within the Democratic Party. All the focus on the professional left is basically on a bunch of people nobody's ever heard of. But in reality, there's tremendous tension between the DNC and the DCCC and the DSCC, who feel that the DNC is focusing on Obama 2008 surge voters that will help Obama in 2012, but may not, may not be the best use of their efforts uh, in 2010, when they should be turning out um, uh, the traditional midterm election voters that uh, you know they really need to turn out and are much more likely to turn out. So there's a there's a lot of sort of war within the Democratic Party about how to, you know, deal with this right. election right now. David, just quickly, what's the one piece of advice that if they were listening this morning at the White House you have for them? concede that, that everything is not perfect, concede that they made mistakes, concede that they frankly didn't try on certain issues, and then go to voters and say that they will try, that they will succeed, that they will make an effort if voters elect Democrats. Don't just bash Democratic voters and tell them that they're whiners. David Sirota and Jane Hampshire, great discussion this morning. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. Thank you.